This new electric motor from German startup Deep Drive sounds really cool. It is said to be more efficient and more powerful than comparable motors, can save up to 150 kg in vehicle weight and increase the range of electric cars by over 20%. At the same time, it is also supposed to be cheaper and use no rare earth. And the craziest thing is that it can also be used as a wheel hub motor and therefore sits directly in the wheel, which brings further advantages. Let's find out together what what makes the new motor so special, when will it come onto the market and whether it will become the new standard for electric cars. And with that, welcome to the German Science Guy, I'm Dr. Jakob Botton and in Germany we say Los geht's. The deep drive motor almost seems like a scam because more efficiency, less weight and lower costs are really blatant promises. That's why I first took a look at who is actually behind it. The startup was founded in 2021 at the Technical University of Munich and then funded by BMW or BMW like we say in German. In 2024, Deep Drive won the German Innovation Award and works with eight of the 10 largest car manufacturers in the world. The startup plans to launch the new engines in serious production as early as 2028. Sounds pretty promising. That's why we got in touch with them to find out a little more. Two things are quite unusual about the new motor concept. Firstly, there are two rotors in one electric motor and secondly, this motor can either be used as a central drive system or as a wheel hub motor. This means that the motor sits directly on the wheel. You can therefore install two to four smaller motors directly on the wheel. This seems rather futuristic, but the concept of wheel hub motors is not completely new. Ferdinand Porsche presented a car with four electric wheel hub motors back in 1900. However, for a number of reasons, the whole thing has not yet caught on. Before I go into the hurdles of wheel hub motors, let's take a look at why the new motor is supposed to be so efficient. The basic principle of an electric motor is that it converts electrical energy into mechanical energy, which can then be used to drive a vehicle. Of course, this principle also works the other way around. For example, when the kinetic energy of the wind drives a wind turbine and therefore generates electricity. But electrical energy can also be recovered when a car breaks. This is known as recuperation. There are many different types of electric motors, all of which are constructed slightly differently. But in simple terms, there are often two basic elements, a rotor and a stator. This means that one element rotates and the second one is fixed. In electric cars, the so-called permanently excited synchronous motor is one of the most common models. Here, permanent magnets are installed in the rotor, which generate a permanent magnetic field. In the stator, on the other hand, there are wound wires, so you have a coil, and that can generate a magnetic field when current is applied. This magnetic field can be controlled, this means rotated around its own axis. And because same magnetic poles repel and opposite poles attract, the rotor is set in motion synchronously. Therefore, the name permanently excited synchronous motor. In this diagram, the rotor with its two or four magnets is on the inside. This is why this design belongs to the so-called internal rotors. However, there are also external rotors where the rotor rotates around the outside of the stator. Deep Drive has now come up with a super smart idea that sounds almost too easy. With their double rotor, there's an outer and an inner rotor that rotates around a stator. And in fact, they're not the first to come up with this idea either, as similar patterns were filed several decades earlier. But Deep Drive could be the first to actually bring this to the road in serious production. Their motor is called a double rotor radial flux machine. Radial flux means that the magnetic field runs vertical to the axis of rotation, so at a 90 degree angle. According to Deep Drive, the additional outer rotor generates a full 30% more torque than the same motor with a single inner rotor. This second rotor gives you more space to attach additional permanent magnets that are driven by the magnetic field. After all, a magnetic field does not run in one direction, but always has close field lines. In the deep drive design, the rotating magnetic field of the stator is therefore located in the middle of the two rotors, which means that the outward and return path of the field lines can be used, so to speak, making the whole thing more efficient. 
Deep Drive has developed two motor concepts with their dual rotor technology, a central motor and a wheel hub motor. Both are available in several versions, but all achieve a peak efficiency of around 96%. That's pretty good, but an efficiency of over 80% is not that unusual for electric motors. However, the whole thing becomes exciting when you look at the overall efficiency, so to speak, the pass from the energy source to the converted kinetic energy. This consideration is called well to wheel. Electric cars are generally much more efficient than combustion or hydrogen cars, but still far from 100% of the electricity is converted into the acceleration of the car, only around 60%. There are losses during charging, for example, due to air resistance, but also in the driving system itself. The exciting thing about the wheel hub motor is that it changes a lot of the car's architecture. Normally, the central engine and drivetrain are installed somewhere in the middle of the vehicle. Now, however, the engine is moved into the wheel and some elements of the drivetrain are eliminated. This also reduces the mechanical losses. The deep drive team has calculated just how big the efficiency gain is. The values from a Tesla Model 3 were compared with a vehicle with two wheel hub motors in the rear axis. When driving the Tesla, around 3.5 to 4 kilowatt hours are lost per 100 kilometers, mainly in the form of heat. With the wheel hub motors, the loss should be reduced to around 1.5 kilowatt hours. Because less energy is lost, the range of the vehicle should be increased by 20 to 25%. Of course, these are figures from the company itself, which must always be viewed critically, but I will come back to that in a moment. In addition to efficiency, there's another practical aspect of wheel hub motor. A lot of space is freed up in the middle of the vehicle because, as I already mentioned, the drivetrain is partially eliminated and the motor is relocated to the tires. This space can be put to good use in electric cars in order to use larger batteries and therefore ensure greater ranges. At the same time, shifting the engine also leads to potential problems, which I naturally want to address here. There are also researchers who are relatively critical of the concept. One problem with the change position of the motor or motors is that they are now directly exposed to a number of environmental influences, such as dust, dirt, moisture and so on. This increases the risk of contamination or corrosion, which of course damages the engine. However, a lot of research has already been done on this topic and there are special sealants that can be used to get this under control. A second problem is mentioned much more frequently in the discussion and that is the so-called ungefederte Masse, so it's called in German and I think it should translate to unsprung mass. This refers to the parts of the vehicle that are located between the road surface and the vehicle suspension. These are of course the tires, brakes, but also parts of the steering that are not sprung and therefore have to withstand heavy loads. With a wheel hub motor, more weight is therefore transferred to these unsprung areas. As a result, the motors are exposed to quite strong impact forces and a shift in weight can also affect handling. According to Deep Drive, however, the motors have already been tested for heavy shock loads and are designed to withstand them accordingly. In addition, the weight increases in unsprung mass due to two motors should not be so enormous in percentage term because tires, brakes, rims and so on already add a lot of weight anyway. And Deep Drive and BMW are actually already testing on the road where points such as handling will of course be checked again under real conditions. There are definitely a few more aspects that can be discussed about the wheel hub motor, but to cut a long story short, I will come to the major catch, a section I have in every video to talk about the big problems. And this time, these are relatively small here, but what is often difficult with such innovation is that it's hard to verify the numbers. As I said, we talk to deep drive ourselves, but we are largely referring to the company's figures. There will probably only be more independent tests once the technology is on the market. This also means that the efficiency advantage over the competition will have to be checked again. The projection for the wheel-to-wheel -wheel process was compared with the Tesla Model 3, which is no longer the most efficient model on the market. Incidentally, Deep Drive wants to go into serious production as early as 2028. However, the central motor will come first as much more of the vehicle has to be redesigned for the wheel hub motors. But then they will not only be used in luxury EVs, but also in the masses. 
Overall, I think the deep drive concept looks pretty promising, especially because the startup is already cooperating with BMW and other manufacturers and they have an economic interest in making the whole thing work. It is therefore realistic that we will be able to use this innovation in the near future. But how do you see it? Do you think we will soon see wheel hub motors on the road or are you still skeptical? Let me know in the comments and in Germany we say Auf Wiedersehen, mach's gut, which translates to goodbye and I think have a good time is a good translation. Goodbye.